Victoria uh, and Pete already talk about some basics and definitions of quorum sensing, and so that I don't have to repeat those. Right? So I directly talk about uh, what we are uh, doing in, in our laboratory in, in South Korea. Uh, we work on plant bacterium, uh, which is called the gloomy. And today, I will talk about the control of primary bacterial metabolism by quorum sensing in the cold area. So the cold area uh, causes disease in rice. It causes rice particle disease and uh, also cause bacteria wilt on many field crops, like uh, uh, hot pepper. And this bacterium produces the toxin, is notorious toxin, so-called toxoflavin. Okay, it's very toxic to, to plant because it, this toxoflavin is uh, photosensitized. So under light, they produce lots of uh, 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 radicals. It's, it can be very, very toxic to rice. Okay, so if you uh, go out to the rice field, you will see lots of a panicle blight like this. And if you look at the individual panicles, you will see a whitening and sometimes discoloration and darklings. Okay, in, in paddy field, in, in uh, uh, hot pepper field, uh, you can see a demonstrating uh, uh, wilting in, on the infection. Uh, so this bacteria infects roots and stems and flowers. So especially this bacterium infects rice flowers. Okay. So under uh, favorable weather conditions, uh, they produce lots of toxins and kills all rice panicles. Okay. Produce toxins, toxoflavin, and has only one quorum sensing system, and the optimum con Growth temperature is 37 degree. And this one quorum sensing system produces two kinds of signals. One is C6 and the other one is C8. And this toxoflavin is, is flavin, so it's yellow color. And you can see actually the crystals of this toxoflavin on the microscope. It's very shiny, small crystals. So they produce lots of toxins. Okay, so th this is uh, some topics uh, we study in our laboratory uh, using Bokoya Gloomy as a model system. We study uh, uh, control of primary uh, metabolism, especially uh, metabolic slowing and regulation of glyoxylate cycle and regulation of activated methyl cycle and control of bacterial toxicity. Uh, second project is quorum sensing dependent cell death. Okay, they have very uh, distinct uh, self degradation mechanism that we uh, have not published yet. And also we study oxalosome formation and deformation, uh, lastly quorum sensing and genome evolution. Uh, today I will talk about uh, mainly the primary metabolism. <clears throat> uh, for, for the last 15 years we uh, published uh, quite a few papers to describe the quorum sensing system uh, in Bacolia gloomy. So this bacterium has one uh, lux I and lux R uh, quorum sensing system. It produces two signals. And we don't know anything about C6 HSL, but C8 HSL is its major quorum sensing signal. And top R is lux R homologue, is C8 HL, uh, receptor, and this TOXR and C8 HSL activate another transcription activate TOXJ, and TOXJ and TOXR uh, activate toxoflavin biosynthesis. So that uh, toxoflavin 
biosynthesis is under control of quorum sensing. This TOC4 and CA HSL also activate QSMR. QSMR is transcription activator which belongs to uh, uh, IS, I, ICLR homolog. Okay. This QSMR activates many different kinds of genes. For example, type 2 secretion and FLHDC. FLHDC is transcriptional regulator for flagella biosynthesis and catalase genes and oxalate biosynthesis and USP genes. Okay, so this is another introduction about buccalic lumi quorum sensing. Um, buccalic lumi utilize amino acid as carbon source, all right? It's, so in, in amino acid rich medium like LB broth. Right. So they produce a lot of ammonia because they utilize ammonia acid as carbon source. So in wild type, the quorum sensing system is on. So this QSMR activates OBCA and OBCB. This OBCA and OBC complex actually use acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate to produce oxalic acid. This oxalic acid is, is being secreted to the medium. Right? So this oxalic acid react with ammonium to neutralize the, 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 the environmental pH. So uh, in wild type, uh, this oxalic acid acts like uh, public good. Okay? It can be produced from QS positive strains. But in QS minus strain, um, there's no quorum sensing systems, so there's no oxalic acid but they still utilize amino acid as carbon source, so they still produce lots of ammonia. So this Bucolia species, not only gloomy, but other uh, Bucolia species are very, very uh, sensitive to high pH, so uh, they die, okay? So quorum sensing mutant, if you grow them in LB broth, they die after one day because of the alkaline toxicity, right? So this oxalic acid is key element in buccalic lumi quorum sensing systems. Um, we have many questions, but uh, I suggest two questions that I want to deliver today. One is individual cells restrict, uh, restrict nutrient acquisition under crowded condition as a function of cooperative activity. So under crowded conditions, do they really restrict nutritional acquisition? Okay, that was one question. And the other one is quorum sensing controls the primary metabolism of individual cells to maintain metabolic homeostasis. So we used basically two key tools. One is transcriptome analysis. Everybody does it nowadays. And the other one is metabolic analysis by C. Toff mass. C. Toff mass is capillary electrophoresis Toff mass. Okay, it's very, very different from other uh, type of uh, uh, mass spectral analysis. So C. Toff mass is very ideal uh, mass spec tools to analyze hydrophilic compounds. So based on our uh, RNA seq analysis, we we found that PTSI, which encodes phosphorylated pyruvate protein phosphotransferase gene, is downregulated by quorum sensing. So we confirmed our, our RNA seq data by uh, QRT PCR. So if you look at the wild type, it's, this is normalized for the exp expression. Uh, wild type is one, and this quorum sensing mutant is, is elevated. If you add the quorum sensing signal to the I mutant, it covered to the wild type. QSMR mutant is still uh, high expression of uh, PTSI gene. This is complementation. So PTSI gene is down-regulated by quorum sensing in buccalic glumine. So 
a PTSI is very important for glucose uptake. So we did actual uh, glucose uptake experiment using C13 labeled glucose. So we measured total C13 labeled compound by using uh, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> I don't remember the name, um, C14 MRI. Uh, uh, so this is the wild type, 250 uh, micromoles. Okay, and uh, this is the quantum uh, uh, sensing mutant, this complementation, and this QSMR mutant, this complementation. So at six hours, that is just before the quorum sensing onset. Okay, so after 10 hours, cell concentration reaches above 10 to the 8 cells per mil. So if you look at the amount of C13 labeled compound, uh, you see more C13 labeled compound in quorum sensing mutant. Okay, this is complementation. Okay, this is QSMR mutant. So uh, quorum sensing mutants, Top five mutant and QSMR mutants, they do take more glucose. Okay, so if they take more glucose, what well, we expect they should grow much faster than the wild type. So when we monitor the growth of wild type and the quantum sensing mutant, we did see the fast growth of the quorum sensing mutants, the green and the pink, they grow much faster than the wild type. Um, so then we were curious what happens when we co-culture the quorum sensing mutant and the wild type. All right, do they all compete the wild type? Yes. The, this is the uh, quantum sensing mutant, uh, top R mutant now. This is the wild type, all right? So top R mutants grow much faster and better than the wild type. So quantum sensing mutant outcompeted the wild type in the LB broths. So quantum sensing down-regulate glucose uptake, all right? So we uh, wanted to confirm other uh, genes that are involved in primary metabolism by QRT-PCR. Right? So, uh, it, I mean, there are a lot, lot of genes, but this is some examples like uh, uh, PGK and PYK, NUOB, and this is ATP synthase and other kinase, NDK, which is nucleoside diphosphokinase, and in all cases, the origins are elevated in quorum sensing mutants. So it's, there is a higher level of uh, T gene expression in quorum sensing mutant. And it did complement it by adding the small quantities of signals to the mutants. Right. So there is down regulation of whole variety of uh, uh, primary metabolism genes in Burkhardt gloomy. So if there is such a wide range of down regulation of the genes that are involved in primary carbon metal metabolism, uh, there should be some uh, uh, big changes in major uh, metabolites in Burkhardt gloomy. So we actually quantified some key elements by uh, CE top mass analysis. This is some part of uh, uh, analysis data. If you look at the uh, glucose 6-phosphate, for example, you see uh, a lot more uh, glucose 6-phosphate in uh, quorum sensing mutant. BGS2 is top I mutant. BGS9 is QSMR mutant, all right? So it's, it's the unit is picomer potent to the nine cells. So another thing is at the ATP. If you look at the ATP levels, you see uh, almost three to five fold increase in uh, quorum sensing mutants. So this is really serious problem in quorum sensing mutants. 
there is a huge bias in primary metabolism in quantum sensing mutants, like the GTP and the PP also. Okay. So there is a huge uh, metabolic imbalance in quantum sensing mutants. So this is ne negative control of uh, uh, primary metabolism by quantum sensing in P. glumi. So this is TCA cycle and this is oxalate cycle. Um, this is oxalate cycle. We call it the oxalate cycle because uh, the OVCA and the OVCB use oxalic acetate and acetyl CoA uh, as a substrate. It produces ox oxalic acid in here. Okay, citrate synthase use the same kind of substrate, but they uh, do the conjugation uh, reaction, the enzyme. All right. So the blue color indicates down regulation by quorum sensing, glucose transport and ATP synthesis, oxidative phosphorylation, and the PPP pentose phosphate pathway, and also uh, at the tutor pathway and also dietary metabolism are down-regulated by quantum sensing. This is another example of down-regulation uh, by quantum sensing in glumi uh, is glutamate uptake. Right? So uh, if you look at data here, this normalized C13 labeled glutamate contents in uh, micromol. So what type they uptake like uh, 1,000 micromole after quorum sensing onset, but quorum sensing mutants, they uptake much more. Right. So if you look at the glutamate uptake uh, gene expression, there's a huge difference here, uh, quorum sensing mutants. These, these two are complementation. So this is just another example of downregulation of primary metabolism. Okay, so if they uptake a lot of glutamate by quorum sensing mutant, uh, there should be some problems in cellular osmolality. So we measure the cellular osmolality uh, at different time intervals. Uh, after 14 hours, we see huge differences in osmolality. These two are quorum sensing mutants. So if there is huge cellular osmolarity, there, something should happen to the cell. So we harvest the cells and cross-section and, and uh, uh, look at the inside of cell under electron microscope, you see lots of hyperhydration here. So this is a wild type. Intake, you see intact cell envelopes. These to our quorum sensing mutants, you see a lot of hyperhydration, right? So they do have uh, uh, osmolality problem and hyperhydration uh, phenomenon, okay? So if we mutate GLTI, which is glutamine transporter, can we uh, avoid the hyperhydration? Answer was yes, all right? So this is the uh, GLTI mutant, there's no hyperhydration, this QS minus mutant along with glutamate, glutamate transporter, there's no uh, hyperhydration. Right. So quorum sensing mutant have cellular osmolality, osmolality problems, but if you knock out the glutamate transporter, uh, we can avoid it. Right. So glutamate uptake is really key factor to maintain cellular os osmolality. So this is a small conclusion uh, in part one. Quorum sensing act as metabolic break on individual cells when cells begin to mass, right? And quorum sensing might have evolved to ensure homeostasis of the primary metabolism of individual cells under crowded conditions. And finally, quorum sensing dependent glutamate uptake is very important to maintain uh, cellular osmolality in a cooperative population. Okay, now I want to change my subject to positive control. So I was talking about negative control, 
now I will talk about parts control of quantum sensing uh, in Berkeley gloomy. Okay, so this is TCA cycle again. When I was talking about TCA cycle, and people was laughing at me. Uh, it's very old classical stuff, and TCA cycle is dynamic anyway. Why do you study TCA cycle? Um, that's true, uh, but nobody really uh, studied what happened to the TCA cycle in terms of population biology concept, right? So uh, there is a oxalate cycle here, and this is the oxalate cycle. The blue is negative control by quorum sensing, but oxalate cycle and oxalate cycle are upregulated by quorum sensing. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this. All right, so uh, HA is isocitrate synthase and GLCP is malate synthase Okay, these two are, two, two enzymes are in the, the TCA glyoxidase cycle. So if you look at the gene label expression in the wild type, it's, and this is uh, quantum sensing mutants, it's much lower than the wild type, and uh, also GLCP. Same thing here. If you add the, uh, the signal uh, to the quantum sensing mutant, it recovers, or even the higher level of expression of uh, SA and GLCB. And this is some DNA binding experiment to, to confirm that QSMR uh, protein actually binds to the promoter of SA and GLCB. And this is metabolic re rewiring by QS at the branch point of glyoxidase TCA cycle. Okay, so we actually measure the enzyme activity of isocyte lyase, and the other one is isocyte dehydrogenase, right? So if we go back to here, this is the, the enzyme that are involved in isocitrate to glyoxidase, that's isocyte lyase. Isocytohydrogenase convert isocitrate to alpha ketoglutrate. All right. So, um, so there, here's negative control and positive control. Quantum sensing negatively control this isocitrate dehydrogenase activity. I mean the transcription activity, and isocitrate lyase is upregulated by quantum sensing. And also, this oxalate cycle is upregulated. I didn't talk about this because it's all the stuff. Okay. So, what happens when we mutate glyoxidase cycle? Why, why this bacteria has glyoxidase cycle? Uh, even in E. coli, we really don't know much about what the glyoxidase cycle does. Uh, what we know about glyoxidase in E. coli, it, 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 is, it is important for two carbon uh, metabolism, like acetate metabolism. That's the only thing we know. Okay, if you uh, look at the textbook, uh, that's the only thing you can find. Right? And why there is glyoxidase and why it is Glyoxycycle is activated by quorum sensing. Uh, that was the, uh, the, the very, very curious question for us. Okay, so we mutated glyoxycycle and see what happens in terms of uh, cooperative activity. So this is population density. All right, this is the wild type, the blue. They grow very well. They reach to the ten to almost ten to ten cells. Uh, per meal after one day, all right, and they maintain good uh, population density even up to the, uh, one week. Uh, this pink line is the a OVCA mutants. Okay, this is oxalic acid minus mutant. They die. They collapse. Okay, there's huge population collapse because they don't make oxalic acid as probably good. Okay, the pH increase. Okay, this is the pH. Okay, if you look at the pH, pH reaches up to 10 to uh, pH 9. Okay, so under high 
uh, pH condition they cannot survive, all right? But uh, this oxalate cycle mutants, they don't die, but there's uh, this amount of decrease in population, this green line, okay? And if you look at the pH changes, pH also increases, all right? But not like OBCA mutant, all right? The wild type, the pH goes up and goes down again and come back to, to neutralized pH, okay? If you look at the oxalic acid production, the, the wild type produces a lot of oxalic acid. Of course, the oxalic acid mutant do not produce anything here. Uh, Glyoxid cycle mutant produces about 50% compared to the wild type. So what is the connection between glyoxalic cycle and oxalic biosynthesis, which is the uh, 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 important for uh, public good biosynthesis? So first thing we did was uh, uh, we compared the uh, uh, transcriptional and translational levels of OBCA uh, in wild type and glyoxalic cycle uh, mutant. Okay, we didn't see much of difference of OVCA expression, okay, at transcriptional level and at translational levels, okay. So in wild type and glyoxalate cycle mutant, OVCA was expressed at the same level. Then why we don't have much of oxalic acid biosynthesis in, in the glyoxalate cycle mutant? All right. So this is uh, the uh, 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 oxalic acid biosynthetic uh, activity. This is actually the specific activity we measured. So after quorum sensing onset, uh, the wild type showed about 40, uh, 40 uh, nanomole per minute per microgram specific activity. But in glyoxalic cycle mutants, about 20. So uh, about 50% decrease in the glyoxycycle mutants, right? So why is that? What is the mechanism um, behind this data? So we did RNA seq analysis, uh, white and uh, glyoxycycle mutant, and compared with white type, we saw lots of differences in. Uh, stress responsive chaperone and chaperonin genes like GRO ES, GRO EL, and DNA JK. Okay, this is a wild type and this is a mutant, glyoxycycle mutant. There is a huge difference between these two. Right? So there was good indication that uh, the, the chaperone might be involved in this business. So we wanted to confirm the, the RNA seq data by qRT-PCR. This is wild type. This is a mutant. Okay, there's huge uh, difference here. Also, we did Western blood analysis using anti gro uh, This is after 14 hours. Okay, this is wild type. This is a, a mutant. This complementation. There's huge difference even in. Uh, Grow year expression at the trans translational level. Okay, so we observed that uh, there is a big differences of grow year uh, expression at transcription and translational levels. So, what is the connection between the elevated expression of grow year and oxalic acid biosynthesis? So we tried many, many different uh, uh, possibilities, and we found out that there's a physical interruption of OVCA by uh, GRO EL, all right? So to prove it, we did immunoprecipitation experiment. So we harvested the whole uh, uh, proteins and immunoprecipitated with uh, anti-OVCA and and then separated on the SDSGR 
and did Western blood analysis using uh, anti-Korea. Okay, this is the result. Okay, so uh, this is loading control. There's uh, elevated amount of uh, OBC uh, grow EL here. So if you convert this plot to the data, this is the ratio of IP readings per input uh, readings. There is a big difference between a wild type and the quantum sensing mutant. Okay, there is more grow year immunoprecipitation. When we submitted this data to MBio, the reviewers were not happy with this data. So uh, we had we had to revise it, and with the, uh, this one more experiment. So we actually measure the OVC activity uh, with the PSA control, okay? This is a non-specific protein. So we did OVC activity experiment in vitro, and this is kind of control, okay? A non-specific protein. So PSA, we added different amount of PSA to, to the reaction. It did not inhibit much. Okay, but if you increase the growth year at different amount, we see dramatic decrease of oxalic, bio, uh, oxalic, oxalic acid biosynthesis. So this did prove that this obvious activity is interrupted by growth year. Okay, so growth year uh, did inhibit the oxalic biosynthetic activity of OBCA. Okay, so uh, if we mutate glyoxate cycle, this bacterium experiences lots of metabolic stress. So what happens, we grow them for a longer time. Okay, do they can survive or do they die or what happened to the culture? So uh, we grow them up to seven days and take out some eloquence spread on, on the LB agar plate and observe the colony morphology, all right? So after four days, we, this is the wild type, the, the small colony, we are seeing the, the big and different type of morphology colonies appear, all right? So um, this is five days, and this is after six days. After six days or seven days, almost all colonies will look like the flat and bigger. Okay, compared to wild type. This is the wild type and this is the mutant, okay? So this is the percent of QSMR plus or QSMR minus. And if you look at the data here, the, this is the uh, minus QSMR mutants. They went up to almost 90%, all right? So uh, we took some colonies uh, of, of the big colonies and uh, sequenced the whole genome in the beginning, and we found there is a mutation in QSMR, all right? So this QSMR is under control of the, the, the Luxal homolog uh, uh, system in, in Burkholdea. Um, some of them had insertion in the, uh, the open reading frame, uh, it's IS element insertion in the beginning of open reading frame, and some of them had big deletion, and 780 base deletion and 100 base deletions. Okay, so we uh, uh, found these bigger colonies have mutation QSMR. All right. So under uh, metabolic stress, they have mutation in QSMR. Why? Okay. Um, so this is QSMR, uh, spontaneous QSM mutants. So there is elevated activity in the QSMR mutants. Uh, isocitrate dehydration activity increase. All right, this is a wild type. This is the original glyoxylate cycle mutants, very similar, okay? These three are three, kind, three different kinds of QSMR uh, mutation to the glyoxidase cycle, okay? 
they, they want to mutate uh, QSL Mars so that they can uh, uh, express more citrate, uh, isocitrate hydrogenase because the oxalate cycle is blocked. Okay, so they want to uh, convert isocitrate to uh, alpha ketoglutarate more under stress. So what happened to the, that kind of a QSMR mutant? So we uh, uh, measured the population density at different times. Okay, so if you look at here, uh, yellow and purple and green, they die. QSMR mutant, because they cannot activate oxalic biosynthesis. So if you look at the biosynthetic activity of oxalate here, uh, the mutant do not make much of oxalic acid, so that the pH increases. Okay, so those mutants are very similar to QSMR mutant, which cannot survive after one day. All right, so they try to survive under metabolic stress by mutation in QSMR but somehow they cannot survive because they cannot make oxalic acid, which is the public good. Okay, so this is conclusion based on that experiment. Uh, quantum sensing mediated metabolic rewiring is very, very critical to sustain the bacterial cooperation in buccal glumi. And we uh, identified new roles of oxalate cycle in bacterial population biology. And this is one good example of how molecular chaperones play important roles in bacterial cooperation. Okay, so here again, uh, the red things uh, that uh, we are re relatively recently uh, added to this quorum sensing circuit in here. Right, so this QSMR activated glyoc cycle, but represses glucose metabolism and nucleotide metabolism and also glutamate uptake. All right, so before I finish up, uh, I'd like to thank the, the postdocs, Anne Gu and Yong Seung Gang, and former members of our students and collaborators. Uh, Sangi Ri is the x-ray guy. Okay, who did the OBCA structural analysis. Uh, also, Pete Greenberg, who uh, uh, collaborated with us about Buccalia, Malaya, and Pseudomalaya. And uh, uh, this is the funding agents that we got money from Korean government, the Creative Research Institute. Okay, and I will stop here, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Okay.